Hi everybody, all my followers. Uh, welcome to another video. So this video today is on a 2011 Ford Transit. Uh, this is the 2.4 diesel. And uh, and uh, the car came to me uh, with the following problem. I'm gonna start the engine so you can see what the problem is. So that's the problem. Engine light is on. Now this car came from another garage and uh, they said that uh, the problem was to do with the airflow meter. Uh, they replaced the airflow meter and the problem carried on. Now I had a quick look as you can see the bonnet is open. The airflow meter in there is an aftermarket. Now I am very petty with uh, certain components, uh, with certain aftermarket components, um, especially when it comes to sensors, uh, airflow meters, uh, crankshaft sensors, um, fuel pressure sensors, there's a lot of sensors I don't like to go aftermarket, uh, but obviously they put a new one in there, uh, the problem was already with the, with the old one. And they put the new one, the problem is the same, so we don't even know if the problem was actually the airflow meter. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously connect the scanner. Now, because I'm doing some work on my uh, Reno computer, I have the fly case right in hand. So we're going to use it, we're going to be using the IDS, but uh, obviously. I would use the Maxi C's if I have to, but we're just going to be using this because it was it was just there ready to be used. So we're going to connect the scanner and we're going to have a look, uh, try to understand what uh, what's going on. Okay, so a scan uh, revealed indeed uh, issues with the airflow meter. So we have two codes pretty much. Uh, we have a P100 uh, and that is for a uh, mass mass or volume airflow circuit uh, signal frequency too low um, EF status no status uh, then we have 1102 P1102 which is um, sensor in range but lower than expected then we have a snapshot which which is a pretty much a kind of a freeze frame um, which tells you the conditions of the engine when it happened, I'm not very worried f with this just yet. These can be important, but I'm not paying a lot of attention to these at the moment. So uh, once again, the the snapshot data for P1102. Then we have uh, freeze frame mode two uh, for P100, which gives a little bit more details of um, the conditions of the car at the moment, at the time when this code was triggered. And then we have pending codes, which is exactly the same two codes, P100, a more simple description of the code, and P1102, another description of the, the code. So these are the codes. Uh, apparently, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't bring the card, delete the codes, makes no difference, they come back straight away. So the next thing we're going to do uh, that I want to see is I want to see exactly what readings uh, are getting into the ECU. And to do that, we're going to load some live data. Okay, so we have some. Uh, we have loaded some uh, data. I've loaded uh, EGR duty cycle. I don't even know. I think it was pre-selected already. Uh, but um, so we have engine RPM, which is uh, idling at the moment. We have uh, mass fuel desired in milligrams. Uh, just to see for the reading but that's it is not very very important for us now the two important ones is these two so we have the mass airflow demanded so that's how much the ECU needs how much is he wants and then we have mass airflow this one here which is I can only I couldn't find anything else so I, I'm, I strongly believe this is the actual uh, reading from the from the sensor and as you can see it's stuck on 416 
the engine is idling now uh, so if I accelerate you're gonna see that the demanded obviously is gonna go up and down so as you can see but the other one is stuck on 416 So that's what it is at the moment. If I turn off the engine and turn the ignition on, it's still stuck on 416. I start the engine. That doesn't really move from 416, as you can see. So, uh, so. It's gonna try to figure out what is wrong with it. Okay, so let's gonna start with the basics. Uh, hopefully, I get the right wiring diagram here. And this is our uh, airflow meter, as you can see. And uh, if you follow uh, pin number three, you can see it comes this way and then it goes all the way up. And if you follow it, it's gonna go straight into fuse 28 and uh, that is going to be the first thing I'm gonna check is gonna be fuse 28 or I can check pin number 3 at the plug see if we have voltage in there but uh, we'll go straight to fuse uh, 28 first and, uh, and we'll go from there Okay, so at the moment uh, I'm not 100% sure that, uh, that actually uh, that wire goes uh, into here. I've checked every single fuse, everything is good. Uh, I don't think that diagram is correct anyway. So I believe that the airflow meter comes straight into the, into the DCU uh, diesel control unit. I believe is what it stands for. Now this... Uh, there's a cover here that is hold with a security bolt, no security bolt, one of these bolts that snap the head when you tie them up. So all I've done was with the grinder I've opened a, a cut in the middle and then obviously with a flat screwdriver just took it off and we're gonna now try to see if we have obviously a good connection between the DCU and the airflow meter so so far I've managed to trace so this plug uh, has six connectors oh, sorry guys there are six connectors but only four are connected so the two hand ones so number one and number six they are not connected um, so far I've traced them all down to this uh, plug here except the one where the probe is uh, number three so this one doesn't seem to go into the into the ECU so I'm gonna have to look for it see where it goes by the way uh, that number three is the one that let's gonna have a look at the diagrams again I think uh, number three is the one that on the diagrams uh, exactly so number one and number six this diagram it seems correct so number one and number six are not connected um, I, I, I could have checked if they actually go onto these uh, pins in there but I haven't uh, but the colors are right gray and violet and number three is the one that says goes to Hang on. Yeah, fuse relox. Yeah, fuse box, uh, relay plate, engine bay. So it should be going to that one. And it says to me that is is a straight connection. It doesn't go through anything, and it just tells me go to fuse twenty eight. So uh, I'm a little bit confused. Hmm. 
Uh, hang on, but number 28 comes through the relay that is powered by that relay K46. Okay, K46. Um, I might gonna test K46. I'm gonna turn the English on, um, but I don't have uh, well, I have F. 28 but it's all good in there so let's gonna turn the ignition on uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be that wire I don't I just don't want to start to strip too much but it's gonna turn the ignition on and see if I have voltage um, on uh, fuse 28 although fuse 28 in there is not a uh, 15 amp but it might be that was changed at some point with a different uh, rate so so let's gonna see if I get I believe it's going to be 12 volts, although mass sensors they are usually 5 volts, but well, let's going to see. Okay, so I have the negative probe connected to pin number 3, which according to the diagram, I hope that diagram is right, should have some voltage, so we're going to have a negative voltage because the probes are the other way around, but it doesn't matter. So we have uh, in pin number 3, let me look for a good ground engine, block will be a good ground. As you can see, we have nothing there. Some millivolts, that's nothing. Okay, now let me pause. Okay, so I just put one of those alligators in there, and just so you can see, I have a good brown in there. If I come into voltage there, I have some good 12.20 volts which is battery voltage and now I want to check these fuses so I'm going to check all these fuses one by one uh, but mainly 28 which I think is that one in there uh, I won't have voltage without connecting the ECU what a silly boy okay so I have 12 volts on uh, every single fuse here with the ignition on obviously the ECU is connected now 12 volts everywhere, which means the if that diagram is correct, obviously the relay is actually powering this uh, these fuses. Uh, so the loom from the car, from the engine, so it comes through here, goes there, comes this way. Then there's a branch here that goes over there, but I don't think this goes anywhere. It's just sensors into the engine. Uh, over there connecting other stuff and then it comes through there there's a plug that breaks here I've checked this plug already uh, I don't think it comes to here but even even if it does comes to here it's gonna go straight into this fuse box and the rest of the loom comes straight into the module so I'm guessing that we're gonna have a broken wire somewhere and that's what we're gonna look for okay problem found so I first got this wire was a little bit the insulation was a little bit worn and you can see the inside of the wire is all kind of start to corrode but it's still connected obviously but then I stripped a little bit further and look at that it's completely gone and that's how our wire so we're gonna rectify this uh, I'm gonna strip probably a little bit back as well. Just make sure up to the main loom there uh, This main one everything is good and uh, We're gonna uh, uh, Repair these these wires. I already took you through on one of my videos how to repair these wires uh, So there's no point to take you through again uh, But yeah, we're gonna repair this pretty all together and then we're gonna have a look at live data and see if we got the problem fixed. Okay, so the loom has been repaired. Uh, only one wire was actually not damaged, which was the yellow wire. All the other ones were already worn away or another, uh, already corroded. So we're gonna wrap, wrap the loom, put it in place and test it. So uh, we put the loom all back together, put everything in place, uh, put the ECU back in place, the cover and all that. 
and uh, I haven't turned the ignition on yet. We're gonna do it now. Uh, it might be that we need to clear the codes for the light to extinguish. I don't think so. We're gonna start the the the, the van and see what happens. So we still have the light on. So I guess for some reason my phone is keep stopping recording. Uh, so the light's still on. So we're gonna uh, go back in there and see, uh, clear the code and see if that uh, is good then. Okay, so this is the screen where we left and uh, we're gonna go now, gonna go back and clear this. Asking me to turn ignition off. Do that. Okay. It's gonna clear the memory. Switch ignition on. Position zero. Yep. Switching on. Okay. Off. Okay. I don't know why it keeps stopping recording. Let's gonna start the engine again. And as you can see, the light is gone. And just curiosity, we're gonna load the same live data. Just have a quick look at the live data, see what the readings are now. Okay, so we have the data loaded again, and as you can see, we have some readings now. Uh, so that was the one that was stuck, sorry guys, that was the one that was stuck at uh, 4.56 or something like that. So as you can see, we now get readings from it. So we have readings from the airflow meter now. And uh, no engine lights, problem solved. So corrosion on those wires, that, that's all it was. Um, as I said, I ended up repairing three out of the four. Uh, the other ones, they were still, yeah, but the, the insulation was already uh, broken, now broken, worn all the way uh, to the wires. So just cut it off. Um, and uh, just well you've seen what I've done uh, so so that's it for this video guys uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video hope there's some information here that it can be useful um, if you have any questions comments uh, just please put them below and like always thank you for watching